The Minecraft 1.20 update Trails and Tales is finally here. Oh, snappers. So uh, go get your snacks, everybody, because today we're going to have ourselves a good time. We're going to be going around exploring, trying to check out all the new features, like being able to edit signs. I, ed I edit you. <laughs> Uh, no, we're gonna go exploring, we're gonna check out all the cool new unique stuff with this update, such as chiseled bookshelves, calibrated skulk sensors, hanging signs, decorated pots, bright blue bamboo, one can dream anyways, we got bamboo planks instead. And let's not forget about our new buddies, the desert horses, also known as camels. Now I'm being a little bit cheeky here just because I thought it was funny when I was putting together all the new features in this update, I started to realize a lot of them are just like slight variations of something that existed before or, or reskins of something or you know just l little changes right? Uh, but I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Uh huh yeah so I would say the chiseled bookshelf here is a great example of what I'm talking about. Like we had bookshelves in the game already and now they've added a new variation of them. Is that useful? Is that interesting? Or is it just added fluff to the game? Well, I would say it is useful, like even though we had exi existing bookshelves, I don't think these really replace them. You're still gonna use these for decorating the inside of your buildings. Uh, and now we have a new variation that works with them. And not only that, you can edit it to have many different combinations, right? So, well, a lot of times when you're building this game, you want two or three blocks that work together so that you don't just have a big flat wall of the same thing. And now we have like the looms, we have these, we have the old bookshelves, and it's just a great combination to put them all together. Also, I love the texture on these. Like this is really nice, the top and the sides is pretty cool. You can combine them, I think, with beehives as well. One of my favorite building blocks. Let's just double check. Like it's a very similar color. I wanna test out all the book types here. So we have uh, just a regular stack of normal books. Put it in, take it out. Oh, and it keeps the name, that's good to see. Uh, we have an enchanted book, Soul Speed 3. Oh, and do you hear that? Oh, that's a nice little detail. We have uh, signed written books that get deleted. No, it's kept the information, good. We have a written book, the never ending to-do list. Let's hope this gets deleted. <laughs> Put it in, yeah, it goes in, take it out, and... Oh, I kept all the information. That's actually good though. Uh, and then we have a named, Enchanted book here. I named it Mending. Uh-huh. And it kept the name. Very good. Okay, so it handles like everything perfectly. One thing I do wish with these uh, bookshelves though is if you hovered over them, if it would tell you what it is. Because there's no way of knowing as it is like this. Like how cool would it be if you hovered over a Mending book and that little text popped up or something. If it told you in some way. I'm gonna guess no on this one. Yeah, can't move them with pistons. The way these chiseled bookshelves interact with redstone is actually pretty unique compared to everything else in the game. Like most containers in this game, if you hook a comparator up to them, it tells you how full it is. That's not what these do. It might seem like that at first. Like if we put one book in, it's got a signal strength of one. And then the second book goes to the second slot. It goes from top left to bottom right as it's filling. It looks for any free spots, right? Um, fourth slot goes to four, but it's not actually keeping track of how full it is. It's keeping track of what was last interacted with. So if we put a book in the sixth slot here, the sixth slot is the last one interacted with. So it's got a signal strength of six. If we take it out of the third slot, it goes down to three. First slot goes to one, put it back in, stays at one, put it in five, goes to five. Probably the main thing the chisel bookshelf is gonna get used for is like secret passages, combination locks. You know, there's the old cliche of the secret passage at the bookshelves. Oh, where could it be? Can we find it? I don't know. It's got to be one of these. Is it the first slot on this one? There we go. We got the secret passage. <laughs> I wanted to see how compact I could make that circuit. So here it is in case you're curious. It's just a three by three thing. Um, this comparator needs to be in subtract mode though. Light needs to be on here. And what this does is you set a key for your bookcase. So if this is empty, the answer is one. And then nothing else works, right? Just one. If you want it to be three, you set this to two and it just add one to it. So now the answer is three. One doesn't work anymore. So it's, it's pretty cool. And then you can combine these together that you have to get multiple, right? And then you have a combination lock. Now I don't want to come off as nitpicky or anything like that. I'm just, I just kind of want to get my voice out there and you know, might encourage some changes. <laughs> uh, I do like all the new features added in this update. I just feel like they, 
missed a couple opportunities along the way. Like with the chiseled bookshelves, for example, there's currently no way of separating enchanted books from each other, like to tell them apart using redstone or anything like that. These store enchanted books, it would have been a great chance, you know, if maybe, like, similar to chess, it could have been this simple as, like, oh, you just name the bookshelf Silk Touch, and then only Silk Touch books will go in there. See how it keeps the name, even after you pick it up here? Could have been something like that. Just name the chiseled bookshelf, and any written book with that name or enchanted book with that name will go in it. Uh, fortune. And then if you left it plain like that, all fortune books would go in. If you wanted to specify, maybe you'd type fortune three, you know? This is more of an etho thing, but I've been kind of developing a pet peeve towards GUIs and video games lately. Like if you want to interact with storage, you, you gotta load up this GUI every time. And it takes you out of the game. It breaks your immersion anytime a GUI pops up. So I was super excited. Oh, we got this bookshelf with no GUI. You can just like, put stuff on, take it off. It feels like you're actually interacting with the world, which is really nice. But like I said, there's no way of figuring out what you actually put on the bookshelf. And it, you'll notice this, Soul Speed 3, when it goes in my inventory, it just says Enchanted Book. <laughs> I, I still can't figure out what it is, right? Even if, after I take it off the bookshelf, it should say uh, Soul Speed 3, where that yellow text is, I think, personally. Because now the only way I can actually figure out what it is, I have to load up a GUI to check it. Which, ah, <laughs> a little annoying. You might be wondering, Etho, what is your favorite thing about this update? I'm going to pick the boringest answer you can imagine. But honestly, it's amazing. <laughs> I am so happy about this. It wasn't even mentioned in the Minecraft trailer for the update. That's how low-key it is. I am talking about the lighting optimizations they have made to the game. It's huge. Like, such a major difference. If you remember last episode and a few before that. We've been spending a lot of time in this area, the enchanting thing. Just constant lag spikes every time I cross the chunk borders. And now it is silky smooth around here. Six, 60 frames per second, no problem while, while recording. No lag spikes. We were playing at six chunks before. We're at 17 right now. And it is beautiful. I spy with my little eye the Crimson Keep. That's right. We're over here because we want to do some exploring today. We want to try to find the cherry blossom biome. We want to try to find camels in the desert. Uh, ocean has like some runes and stuff for us to check out. And this over here is kind of like one of the farthest uh, unexplored areas in our world. So this is all going to be new terrain uh, outside this portal. No, oh, but we spawned underground. Uh, I should probably help him. All right, I checked a pretty big chunk of the ocean here, and there's like no underwater runes or anything. I, I was a little disappointed, but then I was flying around, and, and guess what I see? Structures on the land, outside the water. And same with uh, over there, too. So we're going to check these out. These are what we're looking for. I thought they'd be under the water, though. Um, So these might have suspicious sand. Yeah, there's a piece right there. Okay, here we go. We're going to make our first brushes. So it's feathers, copper, and a stick. And let's get digging. So I think you just hold right click. Oh. On the first one. <laughs> nice. We got a sniffer egg right away. Oh, and then it turns to regular sand. Okay, that was pretty cool. Can't complain about that. What else we got here? Looks like an axe, maybe a shovel. It's a... Uh... Iron Axe. My goodness. Okay. Let's keep digging. I want some sherds. Give me the sherds. Looks like a, a hoe. Oh, we got one more over here. Oh, I think that's a sherd. For making the new decorative uh, pots. Snort Pottery Sherd. Interesting. So I think that's the sniffer one, right? Gunpowder? Oh, no, coal. Yeah, any of this stuff we can get is going to be super nice for me because I don't really explore a lot normally in this game. So any sherds we get are going to be, like, precious to me. <laughs> for sure. For sure. <laughs> okay. We got a couple here. I think most of this is just going to be, like, junk items like that, though, unfortunately. Oh, buried treasure. I'm going to check that out in a second. Okay. We got a few more over here. That is another hoe. Ooh, an emerald. Not very useful. Uh-oh, did I break one? 
Oh, I think I broke one accidentally. There is a way to get the suspicious gravel and sand if you want to use it for building, but it loses the items inside. Uh, probably one of the easiest ways is drop it into two cobwebs, I believe. As long as it floats there, I think for 30 seconds, it breaks into its entity form. It takes 25 seconds to get through a cobweb, if I remember right. So it should take like a five seconds in the next one here. And there we go. We got ourselves some suspicious gravel. Oh, there it is. Found it. Oh, baby. Don't have too many of those either. So that's a, a pretty nice find. Can you just put a slab underneath it? I feel like that would break it too, right? Maybe. Oh, no, it destroyed it, I think. I want to try out the bubble column method as well. So we got soul sand there and then two blocks of water above it. And then we're just going to drop it on top. And it'll float there. And as long as it floats for 30 seconds, it'll break into entity form as well. Seems to be taking longer, but it's just my imagination. I know it, right? Okay, we got it. Very good, very good. <gasps> yes. Okay, we got another one. Which is that? Explore pottery shirt. Is it a map? Like a piece of a map, maybe? I don't know how many there are or what they all are. I haven't looked it up yet. Here we go. We're getting them now. Sword? I think that was a sword. Well, I guess the strategy here... Like, if you do an excavation and you see it's junk... Like, I don't need another wooden hoe. You stop sweeping it. It goes back. These are the ones I should be collecting. Right? After I figure out their garbage. <laughs> that way it's not a waste. Let's see if we can do it with just one water. Yeah. All right, everybody. I just got a glimpse of a cherry blossom tree up ahead here. So I decided let's fall back and I'll bring you in and give you the view I saw as I pr approached here because it was amazing. <laughs> give you the true amplified experience here. All right. So we're coming from the ocean. You know, it's pretty nice. we got the hills on the left and the right and then... Some like plateaus and stuff happening here. We fly in underneath the the floating islands, and then it comes out. Check this out. Check this out. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Isn't this awesome? We got like giant ice glaciers on the mountain. We have the powdered snow, I'm assuming, and then we got the cherry blossom trees on the left and the right here. Giant, humongous mountains here. Oh, I never even looked up at the top here. Okay, let's go around the left first. There's a village over there. Is this meadows? Yeah, meadow biome over here. This is a pretty cool area, I gotta say. I just took a look at the other side of the mountain here. It's it's okay. It's not quite as nice, though, I don't think. There's like a, a giant overhang here, which looks cool from that angle. But once you're looking like dead on over here, not quite as nice, right? <laughs> Uh, I did see, though, look at this, there's more cherry blossom trees over this way, so we should go check this out, too. I don't know if they always spawn with the, the glaciers there, but I do like that a lot. The pink and the blue together looks really nice. Oh, there's a bit up over here, too. Interesting, interesting. And you'll notice I can sort of explore while recording here with the new lighting engine and not lag like crazy. Okay, we got a pretty big one over here. They must have to generate at a certain height or something, because it seems to cut off once the, the train goes down lower or higher. If it goes higher, it turns into the frozen peaks. If it goes lower, it turns into just like planes or something. Okay, so let's try to get some samples here to bring back home with us. All we really need is the, the tree saplings and the flowers, I believe. Uh, if we punch these, you actually get them for just punching them, really. Okay, that's cool. Thought you'd need to shear them or something. Uh-huh. And then uh, when we plant them, I think you pick which corner you want them in, right? Or am I wrong about that? It doesn't seem to go where I'm clicking. <laughs> uh, I might be wrong about that. I don't know how these work. Like, uh, it should go into this corner, right? Nope. Hmm. Interesting. All right, I'm going to have to figure those out. Uh, we can get some trees here as well, though. So let's see what the strip stuff looks like. Kind of a, a bright pink. I think that's pretty good, right? I don't know if I would ever use this wood in building. It's it's a little, like it's a chaotic texture and it's a weird color. I don't know if it would really go with too many things in the game right now. Well, I'll have to play around with it and see. 
All right, here we go. We're getting some saplings. Very cool. Cherry saplings. Look at these. What do they look like in flower pots? Let's check that out too. Uh, I got some flower pot stuff. I think you can put them in flower pots, right? Uh, let's check it out. Oh, can you put these in? No, you can't. Cherry sapling? Those go in though. Okay, cool, cool. Let's keep it moving here though. We got a lot of stuff to check out today. Hmm. Yeah, okay, so you need two if you're doing it underwater for some reason. I think. <laughs> I don't know why it wasn't working before with only one. It's kind of weird, you know, it's like, oh, it's the archaeology update. Let's go explore some old runes and, uh, you know, preserve the old uh, history. But no, I'm actually just destroying them all now, looking for the suspicious sand. Because <laughs> it's always underneath, like, the, the stone bricks and stuff, right? You gotta, you gotta bulldoze everything to find it. Did we get it? Oh, we didn't get it. Oh, that's a lot of lasers on me. <laughs> Hold up a second here, guys. We, we don't have to be this aggressive with each other, do we? They're all over me. Let's let's make a little hidey hole here, I think. Okay, so in 1.20, we got the new armor trims in the game. And you get most of those from exploring structures, but you have a 20% chance when you kill the Elder Guardian of getting one. I didn't get one. 20% chance. Nope. This is how Karens get made. You can't do me like this. Where are my sponges? I want my sponges! I defeat the Elder Guardian! I want no pomegranates! At least we got turtles. Yeah, so armor trims, they spawn in like desert temples, jungle temples, bastions, nether fortresses, and shipwrecks also have their own unique one you can find, and it took me three shipwrecks I've checked until I finally found it here. Smithing template, we got two in one chest. Look at this one. I, I've seen shipwrecks up on land before. I've never seen them totally frozen in ice like this before. That's, that's pretty cool. All inside and everything is ice. There's the door. <laughs> and the chest. And the buried treasure map. My favorite biome in this game is like underwater caves, but especially these dripstone ones are just so fun to explore. Like, look at this. It's so cool. <laughs> you got the pillar in the middle there. It's, it's like so scenic. That's a pillager outpost. <laughs> oh, it's iron golems though. I still haven't found a laze. Oh, man. We can get a, a trim here though, possibly, if we're lucky. Oh, there's another cage. Oh, and it has a lazen. One, two, perfect. We'll do it the proper way here. We'll use the stairs. And ignore everybody on the way. Oh, we got a horn, but no uh, no trim in there. Oh, I don't know about this, everybody. He's got that cage under lockdown, I tell you. He's not moving. He's not budging. I made uh, a couple preparations here. I spent a few minutes planning things out, how we're going to do this. And I think, I think we just got to go for it. Here we go. Oh, I hit him with the Ender Pearl. <laughs> okay, let's clear out the Rift Raft. Hopefully, I don't attract everybody here. <laughs> it's not looking good. Oh, he's in the cage. Oh, man. Okay. Uh, I don't want to use a sword in case I accidentally hit him. Although, I don't think I can kill them, right? Um, okay, got my leads. I'm going to have to uh, grab him quick here. And then, let's go. Let's go. No, don't fight them. Oh, they're getting attacked. Are they invincible? I don't even know. I can't remember. <laughs> I don't think I can kill them, but I think other mobs might be able to. All right, my plans are kind of falling apart here. I wanted to try to duplicate them before we went to the nether, just in case uh, there was a problem, you know, and something happened to them. <laughs> but I guess you got to get them dancing with a, a jukebox to make that happen. So we just got to go for it here. No, don't run away from me. No, we're friends. Okay, we got them. Uh, I made a little path here. A bridge. Turns out we're actually very close to our nether tunnel. Okay, I think we're good. I lost one. <laughs> oh, come on. There you are. <laughs> don't, don't do that to me, please. Okay, I'm just going to take the one guy. If the other guy wants to follow, good, good for him. 
but uh, that lead disappeared and I don't have any more. <laughs> so we're just going to have to try and make this work. Yeah, he's following. Okay, good, good. Come on up. Yeah, we're almost almost in a safe spot. There you go. Okay, cool. And it's just a 3,000 block walk and uh, everything's going to go fine, right? It's always so stressful moving mobs a long distance in this game, but uh, I think I think he's good now. Oh, oh, there you are. You know, I don't think I've ever ran down that tunnel before. I've always, uh, even when I was building it, I would take a boat at least part of the way, right? It's uh, like a minute by boat to go down all the way to the Crimson Keep. It's uh, just about 15 minutes if you run it, apparently. <laughs> it is crazy far. Uh, we got our jukebox, so I got some backup leads here. Let's get him dancing. Oh, look at the twirls. Now, how's this work? I just... There we go. Okay, cool. Sorry about that. I got a little sidetracked from the 1.20 stuff with the, the laser. We'll get back to it now. But uh, in my world, whenever I see a new mob like that, I kind of just got to go for it because <laughs> I don't explore a lot. And also because uh, a lot of my world has been generated already, I very rarely see new mobs. Like I still don't have pandas. I still don't have polar bears anywhere in our main area here. I brought them over once and they died. Turtles, I had one turtle egg and I failed to hatch it. So I'm very happy to get those again. <laughs> and uh, what else we need? We need foxes still are on my list. But we got a laze now, so that's cool. Uh, anyways, we got a sniffer egg. We, we'll need one more if we want to breed them. But we'll try to get this guy hatching. Apparently, if you put it on a moss block, it will hatch twice as quickly. Uh-huh. So you just put it down and you, you just wait around. I don't think it can get destroyed from mobs or anything. It's just uh, one of those things that takes a bit of time. You got to be near it for it to hatch. While that's going, let's experiment with the decorative pots, shall we? So, you remember, I, I looked it up on the, the wiki. It was all the way back October 2020 when they first showed these off. <laughs> it's been a bit of time. And originally, you made clay pots and you had to like fire them over a fire and stuff. They got rid of all that. You just craft it directly with bricks now. Um, put them down. It looks like they don't stack at all. Even if they're the same. Interesting. And I think you can bust them. Oh yeah, with the sword. Cool. How many do you get back when you do that? Let's put these all away. Bust it. Oh, you get all four. It's pretty satisfying. Oh, check it out. We got some cracks showing up in our sniffer egg here. It's starting to hatch. Very cool. Um, I got I to gotta try some more stuff out here. So can you push these with pistons? I'm going to guess no, unfortunately. But we'll find out. Oh, it breaks it. Okay, interesting. Um, the big question here for me, <laughs> I think I talked to someone at Mojang about this. You have to be able to put items in these for mini games, you know, like a mystery item. And then when you break it, it's like satisfying. Did they do that? Nope. Nope. Unfortunately, you can't put anything inside. Oh, missed opportunity. What about, uh, can you break them with a bow at least? Nope. Oh dear. Oh, second, second one. Gravity. No. Water. Yes. Ceiling. Maybe. <laughs> okay, I like the audio on this guy. This mob seems so chill, you know? It's just like, I oh, was going along with my day, you know? <laughs> Whoop. <laughs> You know what I think it is? It's because it moves so slow. Like most mobs are like, oh, I'm over here. Oh, now I'm over here. Now I'm over here. And this guy, he's like, he's either full stopped or he's like just slowly chugging along, you know? Here he goes. He's chugging along again. We shall name him the great <laughs> Snuffle up, I guess. <laughs> oh my goodness. Don't rush these guys. Let them go at their own pace, okay? It's, they're not meant to go this quickly. Oh yeah, and by the way, from our ocean adventure before, we ended up getting 45 suspicious gravel. That stuff takes a very long time to collect. I'm guessing most people won't even bother. <laughs> uh, it's like very tedious. Uh, we did get five different types of sherds here as well. We can play around with. According to the wiki page, there's 20 types. But you can only find certain ones in certain areas. So the cold ocean ruins there only had four different ones. Everything except the snort one came from there. 
Um, okay, and the way these work, instead of using bricks, you just use these instead, where the bricks would go. If you want, though, you can also combine it with the bricks, and you see this face over here just went to plain. So if we put that there, it, uh, it changes to a texture. And you move them around and choose what side you want everything on. And you craft it together. And bam, we got the uh, little images on your thing. Oh, that's like a warden sort of thing? Or is that like a a, a very strong cow, maybe? <laughs> Looks like it's a cow standing up. <laughs> is that what it is? Wait a second, what is this thing? Or is it the totem? I'm seeing a cow with like antlers and stuff and those are its two feet, its two arms. It's like, well, what's up, man? What's up? Treasure chest. We got the blade. I think that's the map. Maybe. And when you're done with it, boom, right it, you get them all back. I messed around with the pink petals a little bit more here and I think I got them figured out now and uh, check it out. You actually have a lot of control with them. You can even spell out words with them or probably draw pictures if you wanted with these things. It always gets placed in the bottom right first. So if I'm facing this, this way, it's in that corner. If I'm facing this way, it's in that corner and it's, it's pretty easy to understand once you use it a little bit. So you can use that to like draw lines or uh, pretty much make any arrangement you want with them. The only rule, as far as I can tell, is you can't place them diagonal from each other within the same block. So for example, I can't put it here in this corner without first putting it in either this corner or this one, unless you do it within a, a second block. So I can do I can do something like this, right? But now it's in two different blocks. Oh, and by the way, if it seems like it's raining a lot this update, I think it's because the rain counter is not resetting when you sleep anymore. So that'll probably get fixed soon in the, in a future update. Uh, these are very easy to duplicate, by the way. So you just right click with bone meal and it pops off. I want to try this out. This should work, right? Yeah, super quick, super easy. He's going for it. <laughs> He's all happy too. What'd you get me, boy? A pitcher pod. Oh, cool. Thank you. Uh-huh. Yeah, so the sniffers, they'll dig around every few minutes for a plant in the ground, like a seed. They'll either get you a pitcher pod or a torch flower. And I think we can plant them in farmland, right? Yeah, there we go. Okay. It doesn't look like much at first here. Just the little thing in the ground. Let's try to bone meal that. See if that works. I don't know if it's my imagination, but wasn't there some kind of blue vine as well? Or did that not get added? Okay, I can bow meal these. Cool, cool. And there we go. Now, how do we harvest this? Is it silk touchable? Okay, yeah. And then does it lose the pod on the bottom? Yeah, okay. So then it's just like that. Oh, but you can move around just fine. And I think you can make these into dye. Yeah, cyan dye. We just got some torch flower seeds from Snufflepagus as well, so let's give these a try. So you can't just put them on the ground, by the way. You actually need farmland, I think. Unless you can put it in the path blocks, but I doubt that. No, just farmland. Okay, you put it down, and then bone meal as well. Is that as big as it gets? I thought it was taller than that. Really? Ah, that's it? Okay. <laughs> What, what happens when you place it? Yeah, it's a, it's a only one block. Oh, I thought it was a two blocker. So obviously looking at these, they're quite a bit different from the other flowers we have in the game. These are a lot more standard, a lot more plain, almost boring. <laughs> well, these are, these are wild. These are out there. These are, they're colorful, right? Look at this. That's purple. You got green, you got red, you got yellow all on the same flower there. That's, that's really, really wild. Now, to use that in a build, I don't think these will look all that great with a build that has a lot of gray in or a lot of like earthy colors. This is more for the, the colorful builds. I would have loved having these for the monstrosity in Hermitcraft Season 7. I tried using other flowers in that build and they just didn't look right. While this, this kind of stuff would have been perfect for like that jungle theme uh, sort of style. Been messing around with the uh, signs as well, the hanging signs. So the way to make those, you actually need strip logs, which is the first recipe to need these. And then you also need two chains. So six logs, two chains gets you six signs. You make them all different types of uh, wood as well. 
And yeah, you can hang them sideways like that or down below off of a block like so. And if you hang them directly on the block like that, you get two chains. If you hold shift when you place them, it, it creates that uh, like one single connection point instead of two. What'd you get me? Another pitcher pod. <laughs> this guy's producing. Uh, I was testing out the collision boxes on these. This one actually, this little bar at the top here is a collision box actually. So if I'm standing on a trap door, I can't walk through that while well, I can walk through all these other ones, no problem. And it looks like it only writes on one side. I'm actually not sure about that now that I think about it. Can we write on this side as well? Hi. Or does that replace both sides? Oh no, it's two-sided. I did not know that. <laughs> All right, that's cool. And I think you can dye these and stuff as well. You can put the glow ink on if you want. Yeah, I was messing around in uh, 1.20 here. There's also support for the Windows emoji stuff. So if you hit the Windows key plus the period together on your keyboard, it'll bring that up. And then you have tons of little options for uh, emojis you can put into the game. And there's some really good ones. Like you got the pickaxe, you got a dice, you got diamonds, palm trees. There's the animals, there's there's faces. So in addition to the cherry planks we got in 1.20 here, there's also bamboo planks, which we want to check out here. Let's get the bamboozler fired up. <laughs> Might actually have another purpose for this thing now. I don't use it very much anymore, but uh, that might be changing now because I think there is a way to craft bamboo planks, right? Or, or how do we do it? There we go. Block of bamboo takes nine. Ah. How do you make the planks? Is it the uncrafting? Oh, okay. Yeah, so you uncraft these. And that gets you the planks. And there's also a, like a mix block, right? I like these ones. The green ones a lot. <laughs> these ones, uh, they're cool too, but I almost feel like the, they're a little too dark, the lines. But it might just be something I gotta get used to. Oh, and the... Let's not forget about the bamboo raft. This is a boat, basically, but it looks a little different. Has a slightly different box on it. And uh, it's pretty cool. <laughs> okay, I gotta figure out how to make that other one. There's one more block. I'm trying to do this stuff without looking it up just to see how intuitive it is. Uh, but I'm a little bit blanking on the other one. I guess, I'm guessing it would be a slab, right? Yeah, there we go. Bamboo mosaic, it's called. Is there a mosaic for the other ones too? Probably not. Or slabs? Don't think so. No, no slabs. But yeah, it seems like there's pretty much everything you would expect from the cherry wood and the bamboo planks here. Like you can make fences out of them, fence gates, pressure plates, buttons, signs, boats, uh, all the all the standard wood stuff. There is mosaic slabs. And also the, the green bamboo here, the bundles can be stripped down if you right click them. And then you get the this color of block, but it's it's still the bundle. Um, but then you can also take those and break them down into the planks as well. And the big thing about bamboo, of course, is it's an easy way to get a bunch of wood for crafting. Because bamboo grows quickly, you can automatically harvest it and stuff. And uh, it's going to be a big game changer, I think. <laughs> Especially uh, if you got a lot of bone meal, you can just set up a bamboozler and uh, go to town with it. Yeah, so in 1.20, we actually got two new things for redstone. We got the chiseled bookshelves and we got the calibrated skulk sensor. A little variation on the other skulk sensor we had. Uh, I'm going to try my best to explain this as clearly as I can. <laughs> Why we needed this, what does it do? First, let's look at the old skulk sensor. Now, this kind of just reacts to everything around it. Unless you like surround it in wool, then it only he hears things from certain directions. But uh, the problem with the old one is it's like always going off and it takes two seconds to activate and, and deactivate. So if I'm walking around, it keeps signaling a one here for detecting movement. And while it's detecting movement, it can't, for example, hear me fly with my elytra wings, which should give a signal strength of four. Um, so you have to make sure the skull sensor isn't doing anything. And then it'll, it'll pick it up. And also, if you want to pick up a certain sound like that, like my elytra wings, signal strength of four, 
you need to add some kind of filter circuit onto your redstone such as this so this will only activate at a signal strength of four from here so at three or less it does nothing at four it, it reaches a target block turns off this torch allows this redstone to go off and then that triggers our note block up there if it's five or more this repeater gets activated and prevents this redstone from shutting off so it's only at four that it'll work the calibrated skulk sensor kind of does the exact same thing but it does it a lot easier a lot more compact so this you can see has a signal strength of four uh, by the dropper here so you just send a, a strength of four into the calibrated skulk sensor and now it's not going to pick up me moving or anything like that it's not going to be activated only when it hears the elytra wing it'll go off and i don't have to worry about other stuff interfering with it so that's the main advantage it has i can be walking around and then activate my elytra and it'll work also it only activates for a second while the skulk sensor activates for two and this also has a longer range the skulk sensor i think is eight blocks and this is 16 so it'll pick it up from much farther away so let's just double check that we'll kind of approach both of them at the same time here you see that one activated already and now the, that one activated the calibrated skulk sensor has another ability that i think is pretty interesting here you'll notice i'm walking around it's activating those ones down there are not if i add an amethyst block to this then it'll send its signal to the next one let's check this out i'm going to give it a strength of four for my elytra wing and it sent that signal strength of four to the other one and if i wanted to relay to the next one i also added an amethyst behind here and now it'll send it to the one further on so it's really good for wireless redstone oh so if i fly sent a signal of four and that one got a signal of four as well if i'm walking around it sends a signal of one now if i want to filter this so it doesn't just pick up all the random noise i can also do that too uh signal strength of four is getting sent to this now so now it's not going to pick up me walking around it's only going to hear me use my elytra and then it's a it's a lot more accurate if i want to use it for a specific purpose there was a time long ago everybody probably almost a decade at this point if i was to guess where diamonds actually had a use and then villager trading came out and everybody bought their tools from villagers mending made it so tools never broke and uh yeah we got we kind of forgot about the diamonds but now in 1.20 there's a reason to get them again you need them to copy the armor trim templates yeah so you take your templates your cobblestone and seven diamonds and that'll duplicate one becomes two and you use these up whenever you want to apply something custom to your armor so let's do our pants here try this out i don't know what my style is going to be i haven't figured that out yet it's gonna be it's gonna be fun experimenting with all this stuff though um so you put your template in whichever one you want to use there's over a dozen different ones found in all the different structures around the world and then you apply your armor in there it can be netherite armor could be diamond can be gold can be all the different types and then you can also apply an ore to it so if you want a green color you use an emerald if you want like a silver you go for iron you can use diamonds can you use the uh, quartz oh you can too how different is that from the iron oh yeah it's quite a bit brighter actually okay um, gold. I haven't tried netherite. <laughs> you can use netherite. <laughs> Wait a second. Is that even noticeable? Yeah, so I think for me, my choices are either going to be emeralds, purple with the amethyst. I like the, the diamond blue. But my character uh, might want the white or the silver. It's, it's a hard choice. Let's try out the blue first off. Yeah, we'll go for that. We'll see what it looks like. Because I got the white hair, you know, on my guy. <laughs> Although I guess you can't even see it if I'm wearing a helmet. But it's kind of uh, it's kind of my colors, right? Aha! Uh -huh. Check it out. We got some blue trim on there. Very cool. Yeah, you know what? I don't think this is our look, everybody. It's a bit goofy looking. I like the line on the bottom of the pants there. But I don't like the upside down omegas on the, the belt and the helmet nope not for me 
but that's part of the fun, right? We get to experiment, try to figure out what we like, and uh, I'll, I'll be messing around with it. Also, we got to find more trims to actually uh, try other stuff. So we got to go exploring some more. Did not find uh, camels today. I'll have to try to do that later. Or the trail runes. Probably will never find those because in Amplified, they're going to be buried deep underground and probably not visible from the surface. Um, okay, let's get to the comment of the day. We got to wrap up for today. It says, Etho, would you ever do a video showing off the different types of redstone components and their uses? A lot of the videos on YouTube like that either skim over the components or go way too in depth. So funny story, back like when I was doing tutorials and stuff, I attempted, I think two or three times to make tutorials on redstone. I was gonna do like a big uh, redstone tutorial course. <laughs> and both times I, you know, I, I spent like a few hours on it. It's like, you know, this isn't really working. <laughs> Uh, I made the mistake of going way into depth and uh, it wasn't going to be an effective way of teaching people. Redstone is very difficult to teach because it's tempting to go way into, way into depth explaining everything, but then it's just going to go over everybody's head. You kind of got to go in stages, like keep it simple and just tr try to explain what's practical first. But there's also the challenge that people also need to gain experience and actually do it before they can really understand it. So it's like you almost got to tell them something. They they try it out and then they come back to you and learn a little bit more and kind of go through a nice order of things. Um, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> so probably not going to happen. Although I'm still tempted to do the Redstone Museum idea I've always been talking about, like build a museum in our world to show off the different Redstone components. And I would like to have a tutorial area in that where you kind of go in, in order at your own pace could be cool. Um, if anyone downloads the world, they could uh, kind of get a tutorial that way. Maybe. Anyways, that's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care. Have fun with 1.20. Bye-bye.